Do you understand what this neutrality is? What stirs you so? To be neutral does not mean to be indifferent or insensitive. You don't have to kill your feelings. It's enough to kill hatred within yourself. This is where we pick up on our continued series on the Witcher's philosophy. Today we discuss what does it mean to be free. So I hope you stick with us as we hop in here on Circle Theory. Toss a coin to your Witcher, oh valley of plenty. Today we pick up from the ideas we discussed last week on our series on the Witcher's philosophy. Specifically, we were getting into a handful of ideas ranging from racism and classism and equality. But here we pick up on what does it mean to be free? Grant so far has explained that for him, he believes that we must become neutral. This is a complicated idea he is trying to pass on to Siri. He says, do you understand? Yes, she whispered. I understand, Grant. I'd, I'd like to take one, one of these roses to remind me, may I? Do, he said after some hesitation, do in order to remember. Let's go now. Let's return to the convoy. This is framed in a discussion was when they're seeing elvish ruins. We discussed this in an earlier episode on art itself. But here we're seeing Siri asked to be reminded of it, to take an artistic symbol, to take something that will symbolically mean the ideas that are so complex we have to create an entire work of art to explain. We can wrap up all of the philosophy in the flower that she took in a single rose. We continue these ideas as we hear them say, women of high birth, including queens, curled their hair and styled it. Warriors cut it short. Only druids and magicians and whores who wore their hair naturally so as to emphasize their independence and freedom. And we're getting the idea that freedom is a statement that they are making. They are wearing their hair to emphasize their independence. That to over obsess and spend this time trying to perform in this civilized state in is itself is to give up what it means to be free. That we are in a sense natural beings. This is the whole idea behind our series on Walden and the ideas that are discussed there. So we're getting this idea, and this is brought up yet again in The Last Wish, but Geralt sees civilization and settling down and becoming civilized as an affront to the neutrality and the state of removal in nature in which he wants to be able to just live out his life in pure freedom. In fairy tales, I was told shepherdesses and orphans became princesses, but here I see a princess is becoming a witcher. And I find this to be an interesting point on a change and shift in paradigm philosophically. Part of what the book is making here is a, is a feminist notion that in this next age, it's not going to be a man, right? The witchers have always been just men, but they are creating a princess into a witcher. They are redefining the roles in which we engage. And so the book is not creating that perhaps these new ideas will be brought forth by a shift in paradigm altogether. And it perhaps no longer it will be desired to be a princess, to deal in courts and deal in all of these pleasantries which we become slaves to in and of themselves. Truth, a truth everyone knows except you. Maybe you don't want to accept the fact that human emotions and feelings weren't killed in you by elixirs and grasses. You killed them. You killed them yourself, but you don't, you dare kill them in the child. And here we see a very important notion though. And the, bush is, the book is pushing back. It's suggesting that while some of the ideas that you want to artistically procreate and move forward are of value, there are weaknesses there as well that we must take a chance to look at and identify in ourselves. Geralt does not have to be feelingless, is the suggestion here. He does not have to be empty. He did that himself for his own reasons, and he shouldn't push that part forward. That perhaps the neutral freedom that is being pushed here as an ideology does not require the cold callous emptiness that was carried by the individuals who discovered it. 
perhaps that ruggedness is not necessary and we can let that go. And perhaps that is a part in us becoming free. And this is where we will end for today. Next week, I'm going to discuss why we fight and what things are worth fighting for. So I hope to catch you next week here on Circle Theory. From when the white wolf fought a silver tongue devil, his army of elves at his hooves did they revel. They came after me with masterful.